Welcome back to another edition of Cover One, the Film Room. Today, I am joined by one of the top corners in the country, a guy that you guys all know from Utah, Mr. Jalen Johnson. What's going on, brother? What's up? How you doing? Not too bad, man. You know, it's, you're someone that I've really wanted to break down film with because, you know, one of your top traits is, you know, your football IQ, your ability to read and recognize route combinations, jump routes. Um, you, you know, you're a guy that has a lot of experience. You played in 38 games, started 29 of them. This past season, you worked through a little bit of an injury. You played through the injury this year. Can you talk about what injury you had and when you had the surgery recently? Um, I had a torn labrum on my right shoulder. Um, I had a series of subluxations. For those who don't know what that means, it kind of goes out in the socket and comes back in. So, I mean, through time and experiencing a lot of those, uh, I ended up tearing my labrum. Um, I started That started in 2018, so I kind of went through spring ball and then all the fall in the season with um, that shoulder. So, I mean, just going through the season with that was, was tough and was kind of challenging. But, I mean, recently now I got it fixed. I think March 4th, right after the combine. So, I mean, I just try to put all my marbles into the combine and train and do all I can for that and then just go and get surgery and get it fixed and then be ready for um, camp about time that rolls around. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. You're a tough guy. You know, it shows on film, too. You're highly competitive. You know, you're feisty. You like to get in guys' faces and let them know that they're that you're there. Um, you're really good with your hands. I, I Honestly, I love your footwork. You know, you have really sticky feet. Your feet are always grounded. Um, so I like you a lot in, you know, press man situations. But as I said at the top, man, I really like you, you know, when you're able to read coverages, use your eyes, and when you're in zone and off coverage. So that's something we're going to touch upon later. Um, but, you know, the other thing I want to talk about is obviously you're playing through an injury. You know, you, you're, you're that competitive guy just trying to work through it. Now, did you have to wear some type of harness or something on your shoulder? Because obviously that pops out anytime you, you, you know, you make a big hit or whatever. Is there any type of like harness that you had to wear during the season? I wore one in practice, but I didn't want to wear one in a game because I, I didn't want to restrict me when going for the ball or anything like that because when the, when wearing a harness, it kind of restricts your range of motion. So I didn't want that to get in effect of my plans. I mean, I was just sorry about that. I went through the pain and allowed any plays or something that I was close to. So, I mean, it's a game of inches, and I didn't want that to be the reason why I didn't make a play. No, that makes sense. And you know what? It worked, honestly. And 2019, I mean, you, you had – 11 pass deflections, two interceptions. I mean, you're in on a total of 36 uh, tackles for the year. Um, you had 102 total tackles in the course of your career at Utah. 88 solo, which is awesome uh, and, and something you want to see from a corner. And, and it shows up on film. You're not afraid to step up into a run fit via that cloud corner. When you guys play that, you know, cover two or Tampa two looks. Um, you're not afraid to stick your nose in there. That's what I love about your game. I mean, he let a 54.9 career passer rating against himself while at Utah last year anytime someone completed a pass against him it only went for 4.88 yards per attempt I mean that's crazy and as I said you know I do like you in a man but I, you guys played a lot of zone as well um, per sports info solutions they, they let us know that you played zone 57 percent of the time obviously man 43 percent you even bumped into the slot a little bit can you talk about uh, how you matched up versus some of the top receivers and when they decided to use you and, and, and shadow those top receivers? Um, yeah, honestly, it was just a matchup, a matchup thing. If, um, the top receiver was inside or outside. I mean, I just went in and guard him and try to um, shut him down in the slot as well. So, I mean, it was just something that was in the game plan of guarding that number one guy um, and following him wherever he went. Now, who would you say was one of the top, you know, one or two guys that you, you played against in your career at Utah as far as receivers go? Ooh, I know definitely Dante Pettis my freshman year. Um, that was a good matchup for me. Um, what made him so difficult to guard? Honestly, I would want to say it's a combination of um, him just being a good route runner, but also me being young. Um, I feel like if I was able to do that, have that same matchup my junior year or my so even my sophomore year and have him still at his, at his best that last year he um, was at Washington, I feel like it would be a different it, it would be a different matchup and I wouldn't have felt the way I felt my freshman year but um I would definitely just say his route running and him being he wasn't too predictable in his route, route running from off coverage Pittman was Michael Pittman he was good LaVisca Chenault he was he was good Brandon Ayuk he was a good matchup just all those guys had brought something different to the table whether it was speed size dynamic playmaking ability or 
anything like that. So, I mean, they just, they just all have their own unique skill. You know, and that's what a lot of people don't realize that you actually played some really good receivers over the course of your career, you know, and week in and week out. And like I said, you, there were times where you're matching up, especially on those like third downs, you know, those big downs, those crucial downs. I mean, I saw you go into the slot a lot in those three by one sets. I mean, there were some times you're just you're just following those top receivers um, of the opposing team, the guys that, you know, the opposing offense wants to go to in those critical times. So that was that's obviously something that works in your favor. And so, you know, I was talking about off coverage earlier. Now, what makes you so good? Because I even went back to some of your huddle highlights, some of your highlights from high school. And you played a lot of off man coverage when you were in high school as well, right? Right. Honestly, just off man just gives you more of ability to be able to play the ball and be able to see the ball. Um, and that was a lot of the reason why I played it, just to give different looks, just to be able to play the ball and make an impact in, in a different way. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, it, it wasn't just zone. You did play man, as you just said. And that's, you know, your quick trigger, your quick feet, um, your ability to read and recognize those routes. Even if it's just a single man route, your trigger is so quick from that, you know, off position that you're able to come down. That's why you only let 4.88 yards per attempt, uh, which is amazing altogether. And, you know, a lot of evaluators say um, they always use the word, the buzzword instincts, instincts, instincts. And, you know, they attach that word to you. But to me, I personally believe that is a cop out. I mean, to me, you know, instincts is a combination of, of film study when it comes to um, play speed, recognizing and, and your experience as a corner. Um, so uh, you obviously made a ton of uh, plays on the ball. I want to give you some credit here when, it, when, when your credit's due. You're a big film junkie. And uh, there was, you know, a, a time before the season, before camp, that your head coach, uh, Kyle Whittingham, bumped into you the night before camp started before the year. And he said you were studying film at 9 PM. Can you talk about that? Right. Honestly, it was just, I, I was just studying. I, w- I would say in that, in the summertime, I was studying myself a lot more so than other teams film, just trying to figure out where I can improve, just trying to figure out some of my, um, yeah, just my areas to improve. I mean, I was just studying a lot, just trying to get my mind right going into camp because camp is, I mean, it, for me, it was different. Me and my third camp is not about, competing for a spot but about sure. better and about um learning um how to how to adjust and how to make different changes and just be better overall because i mean i'm not trying to go into another season being the same player so it's just about studying everything i can to try to better my game and better my iq now you're talking about bettering your game uh week to week uh, obviously there's a game plan you guys have to study and install obviously there are specific tendencies maybe some of the graduate assistants and uh, assistant coaches and even your position coaches probably give to you and, and tell you to look for. Um, but I want to know how many hours a week of film do you study on your own outside of what you're, you're supposed to do, you know, on campus with your teammates, with your position, uh, other guys at your positions. How many hours a week do you watch film? And, you know, what, what are you looking for? Um, for me, I would say anywhere between five and seven hours um, a week. I would say the, um, the back end of the week, I would kind of tone in depending on the team and depending on um, the game, I would tune in the night before and then the day of just watching extra film. But honestly, for me, I just watched the game for me is just about breaking it down into situations. And I feel like if, once you understand um, each and every situation and what our offense is trying to do in all those situations, then you can try to, or not even try, you can find tendency, you can find, little keys that'll help you um, make plays on the ball and just being able to play faster and being able to see things. So, I mean, for me, it was just in the beginning of the week, I like to start with first and second downs. Um, what, is it, what does the team do if they pick up a good amount of yards? If it's second and short, do they like to take shots? Or what is their game plan in first and second down? Um, and then after I kind of get a good hold of that, I like to go see what are their favorite pass concepts, what are their favorite passing um, formations, or just how do they like to get to their, their passing concepts. Um, and then after that, I just go to more situational ball, just third down, red zone, two minute, just kind of what are their favorite things? What do they go to? So for me, it was just about finding about at least two to three nuggets. I mean, that's what I, we call them in Utah, yeah. nuggets. Just that you can either take a chance on it that you can kind of see and be able to be all over. But I mean, after that, it was just about playing football and staying true to technique. But I mean, it was just just trying to find a couple nuggets in every in every situation. I mean, a lot of the games that 
um, I played in, there was always some something in that game I I, w- I was true on due to the film study or due to something that I seen in film prior. So I mean, it was just just about trying to find things because I mean, offenses are real consistent and they don't change up their identity. They are who they are. Um, so it's just about taking advantage of that and being able to just make plays. You're right. You know, they are who they are. And a lot of college offenses nowadays, they're not highly complex offenses. I mean, they're running the same concepts. They're just trying to do it with tempo a lot faster to get you the, you know tired, obviously, first of all. So they up the tempo. And then, you know, there's only so many concepts you can run. And there's so many variations you can run with that big a roster. So um, that's a great lead into this film study because we're going to break down one of your interceptions against Washington this year. But it's something that you saw on film a few weeks prior, a few games prior. Without further ado, let's jump into the film room. All right, guys. Now we're in the film room. And as I would mentioned, Jalen Johnson made a heck of a play against Washington by picking off Jacob Eason in the third quarter. And it was a pivotal point in the game. And he took this to the house. But after the game, Jalen had mentioned something about seeing this on film and how much film study uh, he did. Jalen, can you talk about that real quick? Is it is this something that you saw on film ahead of time? Yeah, most definitely. Um, the formation that they were in and how tight the tight ends were to the formation and the split by uh, my receiver being between the numbers and the hash mark was was a big out tendency by him. Um, and honestly, it was just and it was something that I almost had um, earlier in the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now it was just All something right. that I watched over and over. And it was funny because one of the other coaches came in uh, while me and my position coach we were. We were watching it and we were really trying to get it down like okay what formations what's his split how consistent is it and it was just something like okay coach like i'm telling you i'm going like i like i told myself i'm not leaving this game without getting one of those at least because i mean they liked them that was one of their favorite passing concepts it was just something that i seen and i just told people like hey they're not like they not getting that on me not this game no and you're right it's it's one of their base concepts we're going to look at it right here and now it's a two by two set which means there's two receivers top and bottom of the screen here. The ball's on the right hash. This is second and six. Again, two by two set, and I'm going to let it roll, and we're going to walk through this. As you can see, the split of the receiver to the bottom of the screen with the ball on the right hash is just, just outside the hashes, but it's the middle of the field concept is is commonly referred to as a mesh concept. Um, it's you know depending on whether it's man or zone, those receivers or the tight ends in the middle of the field are going to be running different routes. They have the option to just run a mesh and like a rub route if it's man, or they can hook it up if they see those second level defenders kind of expanding into their zones. All right. So now, as you can see, those middle receivers are just running their mesh concept to the bottom of the screen and just running, you know, a speed out, speed turn out. And he gets, he gets the, the pass there. It's basically a single high coverage here. Um, but now let me ask you, Jalen. Now, this formation, this two by two formation, you know, certain defensive coordinators make their guys call out the formation. Now, is there a specific formation name that you guys had for this two by two set? Um, we call this near doubles Y off. Okay, so kind of explain that. What's the the Y off is obviously the tight end to the top of the screen off the line of scrimmage. So near doubles, doubles is just two by two, right? Right, and then we got the near from the back. So if the back is near or away from the tight end, so if he was opposite of the tight end side, he will be, we would consider that far. Um, but since he's on the side of the tight end and close to him, we called it near doubles, doubles formation, two by two, Y off with the tight end off the line scrimmage. Perfect. And again, this, this was a few weeks prior to your meeting uh, with Washington and it was a nice, you know, speed out completion for first down. Now, fast forward to a couple weeks later in Washington led by, Jacob Eason, the quarterback, obviously he's he's a you know a talented quarterback, big arm, probably going to go quite early in this draft. He's playing against BYU here. Now the ball's on the left hash, and you see it's first and ten, another two by two set. And as you said, this was a, a concept that they use a lot. This is a base concept for them. They ran it on first down. They ran it on second and medium. They ran it on second and twenty when you actually picked it off. So they used it in every situation. Now. To the bottom of the screen here, you, you talk about the split of the receiver. Now, you can see this corner is in off coverage. He's pretty far off, playing outside leverage. Now, what kind of split would you call this? Is this a plus? Is this a minus? Where are you measuring from? I mean, we called it. It'll, it'll be a plus just because we go from the numbers. From so the numbers, okay. Top of the numbers or inside of the numbers, we called it a we called it plus. And anything below the numbers, we called it minus. So, I mean, for us to just be a 
we just called it a um, tight split or a cut split. Um, yeah. Now that's about it. All right. And yeah, again, this is a, you know, middle of the field type play. You see both of those guys over the middle hook it up because the defense drops into a single high, almost like a cover three rip Liz type look. So it's his own coverage and Easton works the middle of the field, throws it over the middle. So again, you saw it in this game a few times. Now they try to do things a little differently, right, Jalen? They'll try to throw the same play out there, but they'll throw a little eye candy, use a little motion, maybe to get an idea whether it's man or zone, right? And that's what you kind of see here. Right, for sure. Still getting to the same formation, the same split. Yeah, they, they still settle, right, into the same splits, the same formation. And again, this is a, a third and five situation. So this is a critical down with the ball on the right hash. And once Easton gets the snap, he, he throws it over the middle again. He sees those second level defenders go ahead and, and hook it up. And so he just hits them and, you know, he, they convert the first down. But again, you're watching to the wide side of the field, to the top of the screen, because this is what Jalen Johnson is seeing every time he watches this clip, uh, you know, leading into the game when they played Washington. He sees that split of that receiver and he's running a speed out. I mean, this is something that he's, you know, you're putting in the back of your mind, right, Jalen? Right, for sure. It, honestly, the way we do it, we just we take notes about how many how many times they're in that formation and have those splits, and how many times they run those routes. And it was just about percentages, and this was about a ninety plus percent <laughs> that, that 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 was going to happen. And even to the bottom side with the dig that they run, I mean, the dig, even, yeah. So I mean, we were just we were just all over this um, concept and just how they wanted to get to it and the splits that they that they were given to kind of give it give it away. Yeah, and, and I, you know, that's I mentioned how you're so good in off coverage. I love you in off coverage to the field for that reason. You know, you're able to trigger and, and jump the ball uh, when they're trying to pass to the field, especially in critical downs like this. And we'll see that later in, in, in this film session. But um, now that, you know, that tendency, you know, note taking. Now, is that something that your position coach um, gives to you or is that something you guys do on your own? Um, he introduced it to to us and to me. Um, I was I was in the room probably the longest we had a few people come in after me, but that was always something that he he preached to us. And he was and he was a lawyer, so I mean everything he does is real analytical, real precise, and real number based. Because I mean there was times where we were like, "Coach, they do this all the time, but they do this ninety percent of the time." And when we go and watch it, it's not ninety percent of the time. It'll really be sixty percent of the time. And now. And I mean, just the little things like that matter to him. Just like, hey, don't don't play around because this can be the difference between somebody getting beat or somebody making a play. So I mean, when it came to really um, taking notes and really being precise on the percentages and really um, taking a ch being able to take a chance on something, that was something that he taught us to really be precise on and really mean it and really take the time to do the calculations. No, I mean, analytics are huge nowadays and it's not just, you know, big picture type things, you know, run versus pass ratios. I mean, little things like that, where you're aligned on the field, the splits of a receiver. Um, I mean, little things as much as, you know, does he align with his his right foot up on the line of scrimmage or is it his left foot, depending on, you know, if they're in the type of system where a receiver breaks on a certain step or whatnot. I mean, that's all stuff as a corner you have to take into account, right? Oh, for sure. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's already hard for the, def or the DBs to uh, because we're playing backwards. So, I mean, any little tip, any nugget we can get to be able to make a play, to be able to give us that, give us an extra trigger, I mean, it's, it's very beneficial for us. All right, so now we flash forward to your game. And, you know, this was a play. I mean, we pretty much just saw it. They're motioning uh, into a two-by-two two set, and they're playing it to the field with the ball on the right hash. It's first and ten. And so what, what are you thinking right now when you see this formation and when you see everything – it's like the stars are aligning here, right? Oh, for sure. I'm thinking in my head because right here we're in cover three. So I'm still thinking in my head. Like I know still whatever the – if it's the route combination that I'm thinking it is, I still have the right to be able to drive this out route. I would just have to drive it from um, more of a zone look. But, I mean, in my right, head, I'm right. going to make them think I'm playing cover three or playing the, um, deep coverage, but I'm really going to play it tight and just kind of bait them, try to bait them into it. Right, and uh, obviously you you know that this is uh, a pressure play. You guys run a cover three, but you do send pressure here off the edge, off the bottom of the screen. So it's right. it's three deep, but it's three under, and you obviously have a little more liberty to jump routes, right? Right. Again, five man pressure. You're three deep, three under, and your eyes are on the quarterback, right? What are you What are you expecting here on this play? 
I'm, I'm, I'm expecting an out route. So right here, <laughs> really reading the eyes on him, seeing if he's looking at him. Um, and then I kind of was just preparing myself and tell myself to get ready to break when he breaks and just try to meet him at the point of the ball. But he was staring him down the whole time right here. So I was, I was kind of anxious to um, kind of slow my feet down and get ready to break since he was staring him down the whole way. Yeah, he was. And you can see him hit the top of the drop. And I want everybody to pay attention to Jalen's feet here when he's in this bail technique because coming out of this break, it is so crisp. And you see him right there, plant, pivot, and then he's downhill. And you're right. If Eason throws this accurately, the ball is right here. If he throws this accurately, you're making a house call on this play earlier in the game. Am I wrong? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> so... Uh, obviously, cover three, uh, you know, three deep, three under. So they're going to attack you. You're playing with a, you know, pretty much head, head up and bail technique. They know, Eason knows that you probably don't have underneath help, right? Because of, of the five-man pressure coming to the bottom of the screen. You don't really have this flats player right yeah. here, That's right? That. So he's not expecting you to jump this. Right. But you do. And again, that transition, when you're in bail, I just love it. And it's something that as a Bills fan, the Bills – play a lot of this bail technique whether it's press bail soft bail it's something that you've perfected uh while at utah and again it just works to your advantage because your feet are so quick and sticky that when you plant and you're downhill on the ball so you almost get this one you guys can look at him in the sideline he's he, he knew it he knew he had that one and if if easton throws that accurately uh he's gonna pick that off but they test him later on in the game i i don't understand it they test him and you see they get into this similar set right here and again, off coverage, uh, right balls on the right hash. It's second and 20. Again, that two by two set. So you saw this one coming uh, immediately, right? You're like, this is this is it. This is my chance. I'm going to try to get it again, right? Yes, sir. What type of uh, you know technique are you taught from a stance standpoint or even after? What are you zoning in on um, uh, technique wise when you're in off coverage, especially in this cover zero look? Um, right here, since it's cover zero, I'm just kind of have my eyes on him. Um, I'm already kind of expecting the out route. And once I examine the formation, I just already expected the out route. So I just had my eyes on him, and I was I was just driving. But honestly, just from a stance, I wanted to kind of take my time getting out, me, being that it was second and long, and I was already about 10, 9, 10 yards off. So, I mean, I just kind of wanted to come out slow a little bit or get, get a delayed um, st start and then just get in my pedal, hold my pedal as long as possible. Because, I mean, I didn't want to open up or anything like that. Just try to hold my pedal and then brick when he broke. And then to hopefully the ball came and it came. <laughs> after that. Yeah, it's you're, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because your back pedal is so smooth here. You're, you know, your hips are low. You got nice bend in your knees and you didn't tip them off at all. And is there anything in the route that you saw? I know you were expecting that speed out, but is there anything that you saw maybe – from the receiver himself, maybe a change in his pace, maybe his his hips weren't as low coming into this break. Is there anything that kind of tipped you off? Like, okay, this is definitely that route I'm expecting. Uh, honestly, no, he did. I mean, I feel like it was it was a good route. Honestly, um, he was pushing me hard vertical. Um, he stuck it pretty well. I mean, honestly, it was it was a well ran route. And you know that I mean, second and twenty, it's cover zero, and. Obviously, you know there's going to be pressure getting in there. So, um, I mean, this is an aggressive play, though. It's cover zero, second and 20. Um, I mean, this is an aggressive play call, but this is what I mean. You know, instincts is, is more than just, you know, a natural reaction. You saw this play on film, and you didn't tip, you know, the the break on this. You, you, you got there still pretty quickly. I mean, you floated in the air for an eternity, it seemed. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, I mean, you, you mentioned it, you know, the throw from the right hash. But that pressure, uh, when when your defense brought pressure, I feel like, you know, it, it, it played even more to your strengths because you're able to, you know, use that read and react skill that you have in that film study and put it to work. Um, and it's something in the NFL, obviously, um, you know, plays happen very quickly. And I know Pro Football Focus did a study recently in regards to uh, how corners cover uh, in three seconds or less, and you're one of the best corners. You're a top five corner in that regard, uh, as far as passer rating goes, and, and defending quick passes. Um, obviously, when a pressure play like this helps you jump that, but I mean, it's still in your hands because if if you don't read this properly, if you don't break, if you tip this, and he gets a hold of this ball, there's a chance 
he could take it to the house instead of you taking it to the house, right? Oh, right, for sure. I mean, honestly, it's a game. It's a game of inches. So, I mean, just the slight of bit of film study, the slight of bit of edge you can get can be the difference between you making a play or somebody else making a play. All right, guys, that was an awesome film session with Jalen Johnson, a former Utah corner, obviously one of the top corners in this draft, one of the smartest corners in this draft, Jalen. Um, I, I want to wish you the best on draft day. I know this whole draft process has been odd. Um, I mean, we're, we're doing this through Zoom. It's something that you obviously have a little experience in, man. I mean, are a lot of teams using this as the primary mode of meeting with you guys? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was... I didn't even know anything about Zoom until this whole thing um, started and that transpired. So, I mean, just about you do, doing what you can at this point. I mean, that's just the name of the game and with everything going on, just being able to be um, use our time wisely and just being able to um, still build connections and still get the job done. What are some of the teams that you uh, met with uh, recently, uh, maybe through FaceTime, through Zoom? I've talked to the Patriots. I've talked to the Bills, the Lions. Talk to the Raiders. Um, I've had a couple of phone calls. Somebody called me from the Chargers. Um, I've had quite a few. I mean, I don't remember all of them, but yeah, yeah. I've had I have a few more to go. Yeah, and I'm sure you had a ton of meetings at the the, com the combine too, right? So I mean, it's probably all blurring uh, together now. Yeah. But again, this is. You know, an odd draft process, but I'm glad that you could come on into the film room with us um, to, you know, break down some film. Um, I, I thought it was a cool story on how, you know, you had mentioned after the game that uh, you had seen this on film. And sure enough, I watched three or four games and I'm like, oh, my God, uh, they, they ran this several times. <laughs> like, right. I can't believe like this is too easy. Like, like I'm surprised it didn't happen several times at Jacob Easton last year, but um, I was happy that you could join us. And obviously, you know, showcase your football IQ, man, because as you said, you know, your, your film study, your analytics, your note taking, all those little things are going to make a difference at the next level. So uh, I appreciate you joining us in, at, you know, cover one, the film room and uh, wish you the best, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your time.